So we have it with crackers, we enjoy it on pizza. Mary, what exactly is cheese? It's, it's milk's leap into immortality. It's preserving the perfect food. And milk has all the nutrition you need to stay alive. And cheese is a way of keeping it that way. And when you make cheese, you're controlling the situation. I'm Emily Noble with SPNN, and I'm enjoying a slice of delicious, award-winning sheep's milk cheese. It was cave-aged. The flavors are amazing. They're dense and blooming and continuing to bloom as I'm talking to you right now. Where did I get it, you ask? I'm in the Trade Lake area of northern Wisconsin at the Love Tree Farm, and I'm sitting here with Mary Falk, who's going to show us how to make this cheese today. Mary, what goes into this delicious cheese? Well, that's the Trade Lake cedar. It's all sheep's milk. And the sheep are grazing on wildflowers, older grasses that are very herbal, um, a combination of anything out there that they can find that is northern Wisconsin. And it, it brings together the pollens, the molds, the yeast in the air, all together to explode in your mouth like you said it was doing. Well, we're so lucky to have you at the St. Paul Farmer's Market every weekend, and I can't wait to learn how to make this cheese. Well, if you really want to learn, let's get going. wanted to know how a sheep cheese is made, this is the first step in the process. All right. Oh, here he comes. We store the milk in these five gallon bags in ice water. That's super, super cold, about 29 degrees. It's like a beautiful, creamy white seed. It is. Almost an ivory color, very buttery looking. Sheep's milk is the, the Rolls Royce of all milks. It's also all grass fed milk. It's not a really big vat, but uh, the high components of the milk. It has a lot more butter fat and protein than other milks, so it makes more cheese. And that will stay in the cheese? That doesn't, you don't skim that off ever? No, that's <laughs> flavor. That's flavor. So this is a small vat of milk. And now what we have to do is just heat it up to the ambient temperature that I use and add the starter culture, and then we have a weight. What do you use as a starter culture? The whey from the previous batch of cheese. You get more floral flavors, and, and now the flavors are, I'm really happy with the flavors. It's like, yes, I knew those flavors were in there. I just knew they were there, so now they're coming out. So. Happening there is a decision making process. I, I was doing math. Oh. <laughs> it looked like you were deep in meditation. <laughs> That's what it takes for me to do math. <laughs> Wisconsin was known as a dairy state because we have grass here that nobody else can grow. With the irrigation, we have growing randomly in our roadside ditches. We have amazing grass, which makes great milk when the cows are grazing, and it turns the milk this really deep golden color, almost an orange, especially the jerseys. So is that, you think, the secret to making good cheese? The good milk. Good milk. It's depth, yes. There's no secret. It's just obvious. And what makes good milk? Good feed, good health, good environment. 
lack of stress on the animal, you know, and obviously the breed characteristics. But you can have a really good breed of animal, but if you're not taking care of it, you're not going to get good milk. We do, usually do a figure eight pattern when we stir, because it helps prevent the milk from slopping. It's, we're just going to bring it to a certain temperature and then put the rennet in, and then it'll just do its thing. What actually is happening when it forms curds? Is it it's like separating the protein? like this, shove it in, and then point up towards you, bring your finger up towards your face. There you go. Just a point. Oh, it's like, like gelled all the way through. Yeah, just silky custard. So what does the cutting actually do? It releases the whey from the curd so it can separate. We're gonna wait for the curd to heal. And uh, that'll be about between five and 10 minutes. Okay, we've waited for the curd to heal. I wanna show you what it's doing. There's a little fine membrane has formed along the edge. Here and here. And you look close, it looks like the lining of an eggshell liner. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help the cheese go, get through the cook and not fall apart. That's what healing does for the curd. Okay. So, what is that? This is a sieve. It's going to allow for the way to get escape from the vat without losing the curds. And just run it onto the bottom and lift up the curd. Oh wow. Feels Great. different than the last time? Yeah. It's very soft. But still it's, it's incredibly soft. But just gently break it up. This is called the press. The press? This is the press. I'm gonna look for big lumps. Okay. Yeah. The cheese, like, like here, look from the cheese set line like that. Uh -huh. You want to just gently break that up. Okay. And we're gonna stack it in there. Oh, just, just stack. How full? Yeah, add, add, just as full as you can. Don't, but don't press it. Okay. Just. I'm gonna let the weight of the cheese curd press it. I see. And the more fluid that goes through there, the better. Has a lot of flavor. Sweet. Yeah. What batch number this is that you're helping with? Uh, thirteen. Correct. So just the weight of the cheese itself presses it down? Yes. It's amazing how that's holding together, or is it? Is that something? Well, yeah, it's still really gentle. Jelly gets hot. Yeah. I got it, and I have really big hands. Yeah. Gotta be fast. Cheese maker you... hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Emily, so we've made the cheese, formed it into curds, put it in its form, and now we're flipping it out because we have to salt the cheese. Is you that know, salt gonna get in there? Or? You bet, this is dry salting. It creates the finest rind on cheeses. Best way to salt the cheese. It just, it just the world wants The world wants to come in to balance, mm -hmm. and when we put salt on the cheese, um, the cheese goes, oh, I gotta get my extra moisture out of me. 
because it wants to balance the calcium and everything with what the salt is and all this other stuff. And so the end result is that it, it pulls the whey, any extra whey, out of the cheese. So and the salt, salt goes in and the moisture comes out. Exactly, but when it does that, the outer cells of the ch cheese shrink as the whey pulls out, and that creates the rind of the cheese. So you can't really get a good rind without salting the cheese. Hi. Well, hey, uh, the, the drier the cheese, the easier it is to age out for a longer period of time. So, and this is also what protects the cheese from the spoilage? Rind, yep, the rind um, holds the, the moisture in that the cheese needs okay. and uh, creates its own little package for it and protects it from many things. Mm -hmm.